Hello and thanks for joining us on Encore. Coming up on today's show. We meet an artist who sculpts solutions, fashions superhuman figures and puts innovative installations in unlikely landscapes. With work featured in the Women House group show at the Monet de Paris, Lucy Otter is in the studio to tell us more. Lucy Otter, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Your work's currently on show in an exhibition here in Paris entitled Women House, which its organisers say is loosely inspired by the phrase from author Virginia Woolf uh, that someone have, must have a room of one's own. So is this piece, the, the body architecture as it's called, is that a way of creating a space of one's own for you? Yes, absolutely. Um, body architecture comes from a previous body of work that I was making, which was refuge wear. This idea of the refuge, the shelter, and the wearability of this shelter. So as you look at the body architecture piece in the Morée de Paris, you notice there are arms and legs and hoods attached to it. So those represent the body, in fact. But there are several bodies in there. So it's not one refuge, one shelter. It's a bringing together of a collective body that I'm trying to represent in this work. And what about yourself as an artist? What was your room of your own, psychological or physical, the, the space necessary to create? The studio is always uh, our psychological room to create. Um, I began in the couture studios because I began my life as a fashion designer um, amongst the sewing machines and the rolls of fabrics and uh, the stitching and making, uh, making of patterns. And uh, even today, my studio is filled with sewing machines alongside all the other materials that we now use. Now, indeed, the piece Body Architecture is featured in the Women House group show at the Monet de Paris. They've chosen 40 female artists whose work is united by a common theme. It's linked to the domestic space. Be it a prison, a paradise or a place of creative expression, the home has been a constant in the work made by many female artists. The exhibition's curator, Camille Morino, explains that as well as four walls and a roof, female artists have also staked out their own bodies as creative territory in the latter half of the 20th century. She told us a little more about that. The female body is represented in architectural form by some of the artists here. But these artists are also using the body as a political tool, as a means to show an alternative, that a female form is not an object of desire or eroticism, but a work of art, a symbol of liberation and a representation of the power of women. Essentially, a new vision of females in society. Lucy, you also use figures, human bodies, as part of your work. They're almost like classical sculptures, the pieces that you create with your husband, Jorge Orta. Um, why do you think the human form is such a good vehicle for what you want to say? A lot of our work is uh, reflecting on the individual as a fragile body in society. And the idea of the body architecture is to bring those individuals together in collective environments. And um, the particular work that we're doing now is actually scanning human figures so making three-dimensional models of those through the technology of 3D scanning and imagining these as new female characters that um, represent different contexts, in particular um, the spirits of the Huvone River, and these you'll see on exhibition in our studio complex, represent the female figures that have been inhabited and part of the history and mythology of the River Huvone, which runs from the St. Beau Mountains down to the port of Marseille. Ah, so great feminine tradition there. Well, yeah. using the human body and, in this case, the female body is something that's quite prevalent in the show Women House. And the output of three of those artists in particular recalls the feminist diktat, the personal is political. Louise Bourgeois, Nikki de saint and Cindy Sherman poured much of themselves into their work and all three of them were pioneers in contemporary art. Julia Seeger has this report. She was considered a force of nature, an obsessive maker of art. With her so-called women houses, gigantic spiders, and her fascination for bodies in all shapes and forms, Louise Bourgeois moved the world with her strong and vanguard artwork. She uses memories of her past, of her childhood. It's her full engagement in her artwork that gives so much emotion to her art pieces and her character as well. Her work was heavily influenced by traumatic psychological events from her childhood, especially her father's infidelity. 
her sexually explicit subject matter and her focus on three-dimensional form were rare for women artists at the time. Louise Bourgeois' work defied categorization, remaining committed to a singular creative vision. Following in her footsteps, an aristocratic, self-taught, rebellious and deeply traumatized young lady emerged on the art scene in the 1960s. Catherine Marie Agnès de saint phal aka Nikki, a renowned model and actress who broke away from her family life to become an artist. Like Louise Bourgeois before her, Nikki used art as a therapeutic and cathartic process to heal from the sexual abuse by her father as a child. She was so angry. She had so much to say. She would always experiment new crazy ways of making her art. She refused to stay trapped in the same concepts. Nikki de saint Fal's work later evolved into nanas, light-hearted, whimsical and gigantic sculptures of female figures. Art pieces considered scandalous at the time. Her aim was to help take down gender stereotypes created by society. American artist Cindy Sherman chose a whole new format to express her feelings, one that would bring together her love of dressing up and her desperate need to please. For the last 30 years, she's been coming out with irreverent portraits in which she herself stars. Photographs that offer social satire on a life-size scale. She's her own photographer as well, but she's also her own hairstylist, her own makeup artist. She works completely unassisted in the studio to create these characters, to create these guises. From society women to garish clowns, her photographs speak to an image-obsessed society created by television, movies and magazines. The genius of her work lies in the fact that the more you see her, the less you recognize her. Lucy, those three artists are often cited as blazing a trail for those who came after them. What about yourself? Who or what mm. inspired you when you were first starting out? There are a couple of artists on exhibition at the Monet de Paris um, that uh, really inspired me. And one of those in particular was Judy Chicago and another is Suzanne Lacey. So these women were interested in social processes um, that could then result in creating artworks together with people and communities. So those are a big inspiration for the work that I did later. Now, as well as art installations, you have a background in fashion design and you've de devised outfits or wearable pieces, let's call them. One of them protects the wearer from a nuclear winter. Another one has an inbuilt stretcher. Is this a very pessimistic view of what's to come or is it just a pragmatic uh, solution? Um, well, they do look functional and I play on these notions of functionality between the object and what could become wearable. I hope that they're not pessimistic and I try to portray as much as possible in the work the notion that the, the individual is fragile, it's a fragile body, but at the same time they can also be very supportive. And the idea, for example, in the stretcher bed piece is that there are figures incorporated into that stretcher bed. So the wounded would be carried out on that, but at the same time incorporated into it, they are both the wounded, but also the bearer, so somebody carrying those that are in need. Now, current affairs and environmental concerns are also very present in your work, concerns about pollution, the, the scarcity of water. Um, how do you see the arts playing a role in these complex struggles? Well, we've often worked with scientists and the scientists say to us that their messages are not getting across, they're too complex, there's too much data. And they've approached us and many other artists, colleagues to say, well, what can, what can you do? How can you visualise these complex scenarios for us? And so it's about working together and finding new mediums, and new expressions that touch people in different ways through different emotions. And of those crises that we're facing now as a planet, as a, a society, what would you say is the most urgent? climate change and sea level rise. Yeah, we're working on a number of projects in particularly around uh, the issue of migration. We know um, the UN figures have published that, that migrants, the migrant situation is going to increase because of sea level rise. And to recognise the rights of these migrants that today don't have refugee status. So these are the kinds of projects, for example, our Antarctica Well Passport issuing bureaus to uh, engage people to think about um, the problems of no borders, 
the issues of migration, etc. Mm -hmm. Now, just on a more personal note, you're originally from the UK, but you moved here to France. You've been living and working here for about 25 years, I think. How do you think it's shaped your creative perspective? Well, I came to Paris as a teenager and um, returned back to study fashion design in the UK and always wanted to work in the fashion industry in the big capitals in New York and in Paris. So I arrived in Paris with my portfolio back in the 90s and began practicing as a designer, uh, working for um, all kinds of different brands here. And then it was at the turn of the 90s that um, there was the crisis, the Gulf War, the first Gulf War crisis and the refugee crisis that I decided that I could use my skills as a designer to um, express situations and uh, the conflict and uh, the desperation of the, the migrants that occurred and the Iraqi migrant, the refugee crisis then. So I used my, my knowledge as a designer to make uh, patterns and those patterns became sculpture and those sculptures became objects that then became wearable, that they were then performed in different situations that allowed the public to interrogate and to think about different issues, including the refugee crisis and including the homeless situation that, of course, was increasing because of the economic recession. OK, so it was a, a circumstantial uh, destiny, perhaps. Now, finally, we asked you about what's on your cultural radar and you flacked up another artist's work, John Acomfra. He makes film and sound installations. And what was it that you found so compelling in these? Well, this particular installation, Purple, talks about um, uh, pollution, climate change and possibly the consequences of that. So it's the past and the future coming together in one and giving us a very poetic number of scenarios for us to reflect on and think about. Well, we'll leave you with an extract of John Acompra's Purple. Lucy, thanks so much for joining us today and thanks to you at home for watching. Remember, you can get more arts and culture on our website and you can also keep up with Encore on social media too. There's more news coming up on France 24 after this.